Hi, I'm Old Norse Specialist Dr. Jackson Crawford. Today on my Patreon-supported YouTube channel about Norse language, myth, runes, and related subjects in my field of expertise, I'm going to be discussing the word alu, which shows up on many inscriptions in the Elder Futhark, the oldest form of the runic alphabet, sometimes in total isolation. There's a lot of speculation about why this word shows up as much as it does and why it should show up in isolation, especially because the meaning with which it's associated in these inscriptions isn't even clear to us. Now, I'm not going to be one of the, uh, you know, overconfident shouting guys on the internet and tell you that I've got all the answers, but I want to make the question a little bit clearer to you, share a little bit more information about this that's hard to find, and see if a little bit of a thought experiment might shed some light on this too. So to begin with, what kind of context do we find Elder Futhark inscriptions with the word Alu on them? Well, very often it's in these bracteates, these things modeled after Roman coins that are worn as pendant style jewelry. Now, we see, for example, uh, I mean, I'll use these catalog numbers and I'll try to find pictures of of uh, some of these relevant ones. It may not be the exact same ones. Uh, from Germany, there's UFO B, which is IK1492. There's Haida B, which is IK74. These are, these are catalogs of inscriptions. Uh, there is the Björnerud Bracteate from Norway, which has Alu written uh, right to left and top to bottom next to a uh, human face. The human face is on these Bracteates are thought to be modeled after the artistic example of Roman coins, which have a big face of the emperor on them. So the faces might be gods or heroes, or maybe potentially someone specific meant to be, uh, you know, like the bearer or the maker or something meant to be portrayed there, or just imitations of Roman emperor faces. Uh, or there's uh, Elgesem, a uh, Norwegian stone that just says Alu, again, right to left and top to bottom. And one of, I think, the weirdest inscriptions with Alu on it is the uh, Spongehill Urn from England, which has Alu written three times. And each time it's written with the central stave of the rune, right? The top to bottom vertical line runes are, rune letters are usually consist of at least one of with the letters going to either side. So you get kind of a double day, a double L, double doubled you. Pretty interesting. Um, there's also the famous Lindholm amulet from Sweden, which has, uh, well, a fair amount of an inscription that we don't really understand, but after several uh, sequences of repeated letters, you know, there's a bunch of A's, a bunch of Z's, a bunch of N's, I think, we get um, Alu, right? So there's no consensus on what all of the repeated sequences of letters mean, or, of course, what alu means there. Now, here's my thought experiment for you about what this might mean. Well, actually, I'll, I'll say one more thing about this, which is there's other words that have uh, similar patterns of occurrence. I mean, the best known is airy laws in Elder Futhark. We see airy laws, sometimes ek airy laws, meaning I, airy laws. Um, inscribed in isolation on certain finds, and airy laws is sometimes found in hidden contexts. So for example, I know of a, uh, a brooch that has I, airy laws, ek airy laws, on the back side of it, right, the part that's not facing a person who would be looking at the person who's wearing it. I can't recall any examples that I've seen of worn uh, jewelry with alu 
on the hidden side. But uh, otherwise, these words do kind of pattern similarly. There's also laukas, which uh, looks on the surface like it should mean leek or onion, which we sometimes see in this, this sort of context too, sometimes in isolation, as well as a word awa, which it's reasonably inferred means something like luck or fortune. It's, it probably only survives in names like uh, modern Norwegian oivind, right? Like good luck wind, originally something like that. Um, alu also looks, superficially at least, like we should know what it means. I'm going to come back to that in a moment after I, I do this little thought experiment about why would you be writing a word in isolation on things like jewelry or stones or urns anyway. And here's my thought. For us today, 2023, uh, English speaking or adjacent cultures, what are the things we are most likely to write in isolation anywhere? Especially on some kind of significant worn item, right? Jewelry or Perhaps a, an equivalent today would be something like a tattoo. Well, the first thing I would think about is an isolated word that you would see written in those contexts is a name. Might be your name, which is an ownership tag. It might be uh, the name of a loved one, uh, perhaps someone that you're expressing devotion to, uh, perhaps someone that you miss, right? A kind of an RIP thing. Um, it's hard to, hard to say, right? But alu cannot be a name. It's a neuter word, grammatically. So it's not a man's name and it's not a woman's name. And there's no family names in any Germanic language culture going 1500 years into the future. So not a name. Well, then the next word that I would think of that you would it's an F-16, a little bit, uh, a little bit of a bigger brother to the broad-tailed hummingbirds otherwise flying around. Um, what was I saying? The next thing that I would think of after a name is, is some kind of slogan word, motto word, but there's no slogan here or motto. Then, of course, in 2023, you know, probably a little bit less in a context 2,000 years ago, I would think about branding, right? You know, we have shirts that say where we got them or hats that say where we got them or bikes that say, you know, the brand of the maker or something. But that's not what's going on here. Why would you write a word that, as far as we can tell, is the ancestor of the word ale, beer, Scandinavian ul. We'll come back to this in a moment. Let me give you a quick word from my friends and partners at Grim Frost. A little bit more about the thought experiment, actually. At this time, it's safe to assume that not that many people could read. So there could be an element of deliberate invocation of mystery. The same way as you might get a tattoo or a piece of jewelry with something written on it in, well, runes today that not that many people can read or you know, or, or perhaps Hebrew letters, which not that many people can read. And in that case, I think that there's a little bit of an invitation that's implied. I want you to ask me what it says, right? Um, I think that's possible, but then what is the thing that you want to be asked about? Again, from a 2023 context, um, you know, if I show you that I have a piece of jewelry that has uh, a, a woman's name written on it in Hebrew, and especially say, like if it's on the underside of this ring, how do you know that it isn't? Like, if I'm taking the time to show that to you, like I'm, I'm expecting you to ask me why, right? Like there's a, there's a story or there's an intrigue that I'm trying to create with this. 
Um, like maybe something like that is going on, but again, the context in which for a 2023 person that makes the most sense is in the context of a name. And if this means beer, it's kind of anticlimactic, I think. Now, you know, that's the perspective of a recovering alcoholic in 2023, not the perspective of someone who might see beer as a source of ritual ecstasy, right? Um, people in, in many ancient cultures use alcohol or other drugs in order to achieve some kind of ecstatic, and what I mean is not, you know, necessarily ludicrously happy, but, you know, um, out of themselves state, um, which is often regarded as somewhat sacred. There's no reason to think that something like that isn't what's implied here, um, or rather, excuse me, I, I, I phrase that a little bit oddly. There's there's a possibility that something like that is at play here, that this is ale as used ritualistically that's meant here. But then, are leeks or onions used ritualistically, like the word laukas? Well, I mean, in some uh, magical remedies, in fact, it does seem like it, and the, uh, the, the, the leek, laukas, Old Norse, laukr, modern Icelandic, luikr, is mentioned uh, surprisingly often in Eddic poetry in a mythic context. So maybe beer and onions, as pedestrian as that sounds to us, have some ritual meaning as implied by their appearances and isolation on things like these worn bracteates. It has been suggested too that perhaps it doesn't mean beer, that it means something else, some word that's otherwise lost, because I'll lose exactly what you would expect the ancestor of Old English Elu, modern English Ale, Old Norse Ol, uh, Ul, and most of the modern Scandinavian languages just means beer. You would expect that to be Alu in Proto Germanic. So Occam's Razor, this is the word beer. Others have suggested other possibilities. The classic one is that this means um, alum, right? This is Lauritz Saltbite's idea that it's, uh, right, and, and alum is a mineral used in traditional medicine. And then this would be related to words like Latin alumen, meaning alum, and Greek uh, aludoimos, meaning bitter, so that then you would have a Proto-European root for alum, or maybe just more simply uh, bitter, bitterness, uh, that this is coming from. Another possibility that you see actually pretty often out there in the world is, uh, in the world of people on the internet talking about runes, is that this is something to do with Hittite words related to magic. So you'll often see something like alwants or alwants, uh, well, wants to cite it often with an asterisk indicating that that exact form isn't found in isolation anywhere uh, from Hittite. And I decided, because I couldn't, all I saw was a bunch of people citing each other on the internet, I decided to turn to my former student, Professor Tony Yates at UCLA. It's kind of neat that uh, I have a former student who's now a professor. That's, that's, that's cool. Um, anyway, he is uh, one of the world's top specialists in Anatolian languages like Hittite. So I asked him, what's going on with this word? He told me Hittite has a set of words that all seem to be derived from a base, alwans. So for example, we have alwan sahans, meaning uh, enchanted. Alwan senas, meaning a sorcerer, witch. Uh, Hittite is probably the least gendered ancient Indo-European language, which is an interesting uh, thing in itself. Alwan satar, meaning witchcraft. So the base is probably alwans, which doesn't actually necessarily look like an Indo-European root, though. So, although if the if the true base, the true root of that is alu, with something else added and ants added at the end from somewhere, that could formally be connected to uh, Germanic alu. Um, I'm a little bit suspicious of that, and there's really nothing more to to go on, but it could just be, based on the Hittite word and the Germanic word, that there is something like alu, or I guess it'd probably be like hilu in Proto-Indo-European, uh, meaning something like magic, witchcraft, sorcery. Uh, if so, the word seems to be otherwise lost in Germanic, with just this word for, you know, ale, that must have looked exactly like this word for witchcraft surviving. 
Some people have suggested that it does survive in one place in Beowulf. Um, so if I start at line 676, 767B or 1534, depending on whether you're reading a full line or a half line version of Beowulf, uh, we see Denum elum werth chester buendum kingra yehwitrum erlum elu sherwin. And uh, a lot of translators have disagreed about how to read this, but it kind of looks like, by the way, this comes in the middle of Beowulf's fight with Grendel, so it's just kind of like an insertion in the middle of an action scene. For all the Danes, the town dwellers, all the brave men, there came Eilu Sherwin. So Eilu looks like the old English word for ale, right? Something that comes from Proto-Germanic alu. But does it mean beer or does it mean whatever this other word is, you know, if, it, if it's magic or something. But then what's the, the Sherwin? This looks like a noun given the context. Um, there is in the poem Andreas, pretty obscure old English poem, there's a word mea du Sherwin, which actually seems to mean mead feasting. But then in the middle of Beowulf fighting Grindel, why do all the Danes, all the brave Danes, have beer feasting if it's that? There's also a uh, Sherwan, which based on, I think it's one occurrence, which is, I think, Nathinre Arna Me Basherwa, don't deprive me of your mercies, seems to mean deprive. So is it beer deprivation? But then why in the middle of Beowulf fighting Grindel are we talking about people being deprived of beer, right? Is it because they can't drink, you know, and have a good time while Beowulf's fighting Grindel, or is it because they're worried that Beowulf's going to die and they're going to get beer anymore because Grindel's going to kill them all? That doesn't seem to make a ton of sense. So... But then if Elu means magic, magic deprivation or magic feasting or something like that also doesn't really make sense in context. So Elu Sherwin, I think, actually doesn't help us very much. Um, yes, it may suggest that there's a synonym, or excuse me, a homonym to Proto-Germanic Alu, Old English Elu, that means something else. But I don't think this passage in Beowulf helps us really get any closer to it. I also think that it's possible to account for the origin of the ale word pretty non-magically. I mean, if it's related to some kind of bitter or alum root and connected to Latin alumen or, or Greek, uh, what was it, Alu, aludomas, uh, that's plausible. There's also Harald Bjorvan's suggestion, which I like, uh, that it actually, um, the, the original base root would be something like hell and Proto-European. Then we have a color or brightness root, which I think is very plausible, having done a lot of research on color and brightness words and everything from Proto-European down to modern Scandinavia. So then it would be related, it would be basically like the brown drink uh, related to elk uh, from the same hell root potentially, right? So like the brown animal. Um, this would then ultimately be related to Sanskrit uh, arusha, like reddish, uh, Vestin Arusha, which means like white, right? You can see how color terms change meaning pretty fast, pretty pretty often. Um, so whether it's the bitter drink or the brown drink, there's a very easy non-magical way to account for um, where the word ale or beer comes from. And to have any kind of plausible connection for a, a, a magical source for a word like alu or old English elu or most ol, we have to turn to a Hittite word that doesn't really look that Indo-European, um, unless it's a compound of some very old Alu word with something else. Um, big question. And really what I think we've got here at the end is just a big question, right? Why does someone feel the necessity to write this word in isolation on a bracteate? right, on some worn jewelry item. Again, to me, whether you're talking about a very literate society like ours or a partially runically literate society like that of Proto-Germanic speakers, Proto-Norse speakers, it seems like it's meant to get attention, right? If I have a piece of jewelry that I wear uh, with a woman's name in Hebrew on it, well, you don't necessarily know that's what it says, but then you ask me about it and I say, it's a woman's name, I want you to ask me about her, right? Even, and maybe especially if it's a little bit hidden, right? Like I'm letting this kind of like show as I'm, I don't know, turning over some pendant or something that on the backside of it, uh, there's, there's 
this name. It's like, yeah, I want you to ask me what it says. I feel like that's, it, it's, it's intended to be somehow uh, attention getting. And that makes it a little bit harder for me to believe that it's necessarily magical, but that it has something more to do with some kind of status thing, right? I want you to ask me about my status as, but, but then what, right? A, a receiver of ale, a receiver of bewitchment, maybe then you have a magical um, connection if it is related to that, that Hittite word, Hittite root. But it's more questions than answers, and the very confident people shouting about this with big beards on the internet, uh, telling you they know what it means, don't know what it means. Neither do the people in the comments who will tell you they know what it means, or that someone else does. It's a mystery, and I hope that this video has helped you gain a little bit more information about why it's a mystery, what all these different threads that don't have a satisfying resolution are that are woven around this word and um, maybe something to think about in terms of well why are you showing off a word like this there's some kind of reason and i think that we haven't quite ever gotten to the bottom of what it is and maybe we never will but for now i want to say thank you to patreon and from um, so close and to to one paradise I'm shut out from and so far from another <laughs> I'm shut out from uh, here in beautiful Colorado I'm wishing all of you all the best